This lesson is on rational exponents. Rational exponents are exponents that are rational numbers, in other words, fractions. And here's something that may look strange to you, but this is true. The square root of x is equal to x to the 1 half. Now to explain where this comes from, we're going to use two facts that you already know. One is the square root of x times the square root of x just equals x. Also, you know your exponent law, x to the a times x to the b. We keep the base, which is x, and add the exponents, a plus b. Putting those two things together gives us this idea right here. If I do x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, then I'm going to keep the base and add the exponents, which is 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. This and this are analogous. This is saying square root of x times the square root of x just equals x. That's the reason the square root of x equals x to the 1 half. Now it's easy to make this conversion. Think about this being a 1, x to the first, and you know when you're dealing with square root that the index out here is understood to be a 2. So the 1 half comes from the inside power goes to the numerator, the index goes to the denominator. So let's do a couple of practice of Let's do a couple of these that we're just working on the converting from radical form to rational exponent form. Cube root of x is the same thing as the cube root of x to the first, which is going to give us x to the one-third. Fourth root of x is like the fourth root of x to the first, x to the one-fourth. This one, we already have a power on the inside. That is just x to the three-fourths. The next is x to the two-thirds. Now we have to be careful here because we have this coefficient. This is 8 to the first. It's also underneath the radical of the fourth root, so it's going to have to have a fraction power on it also. So it is 8 to the 1 fourth, x to the 5 fourths. This is a little different. This whole thing is in parentheses squared, so I can keep the whole thing in parentheses and raise it to the 2 fifths power. Let's work the other direction. We have a rational exponent. We want to go backwards to the radical form. 6 to the 1 fifth. Now that 5 is going to be the index. The 1 is the power on the inside. It becomes the fifth root of 6 to the first, but there's no reason to write the first. Here's the 7 on the bottom is your index, and then it's x to the first on the inside. The 4 on the bottom is your index, the y cubed. Now be careful here. This 6 is not being raised to the 2 ninths power. It's just a plain old coefficient that will remain outside of the radical. This is the only thing that's going to be inside a radical. So it is 6 times the ninth root of x squared. And when you write this, be careful that you write this index tiny enough so that it's inside here. Don't float it too far out so that it looks something like 6 to the ninth, which it's not. Now you also have to be able to evaluate with your calculator. 16 to the 1 fourth is just a matter of taking 16, which is the base, use your caret, Raising it to the 1 fourth power, that needs to be in parentheses. 1 divided by 4, you type that in, you should get 2. Now, I'm, I'm assuming you have something like a graphing calculator, but if you don't, and you don't have a caret, you may instead have a button that's called y to the x, or maybe x to the y. So you, instead of hitting the caret, would hit 16, then the y to the x button, and then the rest of this. So 8 to the 2 thirds will be 8 caret 2 divided by 3, which gives you 4. 27 to the 5 thirds will be 27, caret 5 divided by 3 equals 243. Be sure you are putting that fraction exponent in parentheses, or the calculator is not doing it correctly. Even with a negative, put this whole thing inside parentheses. 64 caret in parentheses, negative 5 divided by 6. It gives you a decimal. Most of these scientific calculators have a way to switch back to fractions. In the graphing calculator, you just go under math and your first option is send it back to a fraction. Your other calculator, you'll just have to figure out what you have to do for that. It just depends on your calculator type. Same thing here. We need two sets of parentheses here. The 1 over 27 is in parentheses, so I need to type it in parentheses. And then caret parentheses for the negative 4 divided by 3. It gives us 81. Same kind of setup on this. 27 eighths, caret, in parentheses, 1 divided by 3 is the decimal 1.5, which is also the fraction 3 halves. Now we're going to do some problems using these rational exponents. 
and our exponent laws that we've already learned. x to the 2 fifths times x to the 3 fifths. This is our rule about keep the base and add the exponents, which will just give us x to the 2 fifths plus 3 fifths. Now, this is a nice easy problem because we already have a common denominator. 2 fifths plus 3 fifths is just 5 fifths, which just gives us x to the first. And of course, you don't have to write the 1. You could just write it as x. But a lot of times, you're not going to have a common denominator. So a to the 3 fourths times a to the 2 thirds is still the same rule which says keep the base and add the exponents. Two choices here. If your calculator will do fractions, you just type this in the way it is. 3 divided by 4 plus 2 divided by 3. You hit equal and you will have the correct exponent. If your calculator will not do fractions for you, you're going to have to go to the old timey get a common denominator routine. You might want to do it in a vertical setup, 3 fourths and 2 thirds have a common denominator of 12. Then you're going to have to multiply to create new numerators. If you multiply top and bottom here by 3, you're going to get a 9 right there. If you multiply this by 4, which is what you need to create a 12, you get an 8. And that's going to give us 17 twelfths. So that's the exponent that goes on the A, A to the 17 twelfths. All of that could be avoided if you have a calculator that will do the fractions for you. Now, here's your other exponent law. This was your law that says keep the base and multiply the exponents because this is raising a power to a power. So if we do 3 times 1 fourth, we just get 3 fourths and we're finished. No common denominator necessary because we are multiplying the fractions. Sometimes there's a little more work there, but it's the same idea. We're going to keep the base and multiply these. Conveniently, this 7 and this 7 cancel out, and we're going to have x to the 4 ninths, and we're finished. Now, we can also use this rule when there's more things inside the parentheses. We're going to have to raise all of this stuff to the third power. This 3 is a coefficient, so we have to do 3 to the third to begin with. And then use our rule that says multiply the exponents. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. If you have to do it by hand, you can just do 3 over 1 times 1 half, that's where the 3 halves comes from, or type that in your calculator. 3 times a third gives us 3 thirds. Now let's clean this up. 3 to the third, which you either know or you type into your calculator, is 3 caret 3, gives us 27. X to the 3 halves, nothing we could do there, but 3 over 3 just simplifies to 1, or just plain old Y. Same kind of problem we just did, but this time we've got some negative exponents to deal with. There's a couple ways to deal with the negative exponents, and the first way I'm going to show you is just a matter of distribute. That negative 1 half has got to distribute to everything inside the parentheses, so it's a matter of multiplying that negative 1 half times everything. Negative 1 half times 2 gives us negative 1. Negative 1 half times negative 3 is a positive 3 halves. If you have to write that down, negative 1 half times negative 3, which is negative 3 over 1, gives us a positive 3 halves. 4 times negative 1 half, that's 4 over 1, times negative 1 half. That's how we get the negative 2. We're not finished with this. The negative exponents need to be sent to the opposite place. This was a negative exponent in the top, needs to be sent to the bottom. This was a negative exponent in the bottom, needs to be sent to the top. So that's one way to deal with the negative exponents. And in this case, that's the easiest way to go. The other way to deal with this is to deal inside the parentheses and to take care of this negative exponent on the inside. If you watch the other videos I've done on exponent laws, I've always said deal with the inside first. And the one thing I could do on this inside is take this negative exponent and send it down to the denominator. So that's all I've done is simplify the inside just a teeny bit it is still to the negative one-half. The other thing we said about negative exponents on the outside is that that tells you to flip the whole thing. So this becomes y cubed, z to the fourth on the top, with an x squared on the bottom. It is still being raised to a power, but because we flipped it, it is now to a positive one-half. Now you have no negative exponents anywhere, and you may just distribute. This will give you y to the 3 halves, because you're going to multiply those, z to the 4 halves, which is just 2, and x to the first, because 2 times 1 half is x. 